Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Kareem Clemens. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for following me right here, right now. This is an episode of Radio 911. Welcome, welcome, welcome to an episode of Radio 911. I am Kareem Clemens, and this is your story. All right, cool. So uh, I am so excited to be here yet again. There is a lot to be said on this radio station. Uh, I do know this is episode 10, season 1. Uh, I do have some uh, broadcast on YouTube and also speaker. That's S P R E A K R dot com. And you guys can follow on the blog page. So these are the stories that I'm going to be talking about today. So get your life. I do want to start off by saying that this is December 1st. And I can say that on this day, uh, we honor in our respects to World AIDS Day. And World AIDS Day, on this day, 35 years ago, December 1st, 1988, was the day to dedicate to raising awareness of AIDS pandemic caused by spreading of HIV infection and mourning those who died of the disease. So right now on Radio 911, we want to take the time to have a moment of silence. Thank you. Next, I would like to also say that on this day, yes, nine years ago, my baby, Omega Studio News platform, was created, adopted, and founded by me, Kareem Clemens. So happy anniversary to the Omega Studio News and Talk Show T, followed by all the other uh, shows that come after, including this one, 911. I do want to say that nine years ago, launched back on December 1st, 2014, Omega Studio News was adopted and founded. We always remember that teamwork makes the dream work come true. At Omega Studio News, we are passionate about bringing you the most essential news and blogging information. And that's why we're proud to offer the platform that is comprehensive and informative, such as Talk Show T, Radio 911, House of Workout. Uh, we also have Formal, The Pretty Bitch Club. We do have a uh, jury review, and we're always up to date. Oh, let me not forget Kareem YouTube Gaming on Facebook. With the various topics covered, as well as special features and segments, our baby talk show TTV, which have adopted the TSTOS News logo, is a one-stop shop for the latest trends and happening in this world. So thank you for checking us out, and we appreciate your readership, your sponsorship, your viewership, and every ship that we could possibly say. We thank you. I thank you. The volunteers thank you. Everybody thank you. The cyber friends, nothing but love, okay? And there is something very special here. Mr. Kareem Clemens. Ninth year of leadership and compassion to Omega Studio News and other platforms. Thank you for being the strong pillar. Thank you for everything. 
by posting and social media, showing love, YouTube gaming. Your satisfaction is what motivates our cyber friends to continuously follow the blogging experience. In the social media world, we bring smiles to our faces and satisfaction matters to us all. Happy ninth anniversary of Mega Studio News and the platform across the board. Special thanks to all the cyber friends on the platform um, for making this happen. Cheers to future achievements and past glories. Thank you, thank you, thank you on this ninth anniversary, December 1st. Okay? And last but not least, I also want to say uh, on this day, we also remember my dear friend, the late Tim Jermaine Williams, who passed away eight years ago on this day. Tim, you are gone, but never forgotten. You are missed, but always loved. You are not with us, but we can feel your spirit. On this day, we think of you and all the memories and the keepsakes from which we will never part. God has you in his arms and we have you in our heart. We miss you. The family misses you. The friends misses you and continue to watch over us. Thank you. Okay, so the next topic that I'll be talking about, uh, and it's just a whole things happening. So I'm going to talk about this. It's, it's not in order, but uh, I will be giving you some information on T.S. Madison. I will be giving you information on George Santos, Sandra De O'Connor. I will be giving you information on Harry Kissinger. Also, I will be giving you information on Puff Daddy. And I will give you information on Jesse Smollett. Okay, so on this day today, December 1st, uh, let me just go ahead and um, go ahead and uh, on this day, December 1st, we lost someone who I read in history books when I was in grammar school, okay, elementary school. And that is Sandra De O'Connor, who made history by being the first female Supreme Court justice in the United States. She passed at 93. I can tell you that, you know, there's a lot that Sandra has done when it comes to paving the way for a lot of people. I can tell you from her being a, an American attorney, a politician, and then being a justice serving on the Supreme Court from 1981, that's the year I was born, to 2006. She was the first woman to serve as a U.S. Su Supreme Court justice and a moderate, and she was also a moderate conservative, and also O'Connor was known for her research opinions, okay? So she was born in El Paso, Texas, and she died December 1st, okay, at 93. I can tell you that it's just a lot that will be in history. We seen it when our Ruth Bay Guinness Bird died. Uh, we seen it when Thurgood Marshall died. We seen it when a lot of... Um, Oh, what's this? Scalito, when he died. A lot of their history, the things that they've done is in history, and we can take that and use it and try to pave more ways for people in this great country. And speaking of her, just a couple of days ago, uh, we lost secretary, former secretary of state. Harry Kissinger, and he died at the age of 100, okay? Uh, you know how they say, 
it comes in threes. Uh, you know, we, we lose him. We lose uh, Sandra. Okay, so Henry Kushinger, he was an American diplomat, a politist, and a scientist, a geopolitic council consultant and a politician who served as the United States Secretary for the National Security Advisory for the Presidential Administration of Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford between 1969 and 1977. Okay, so rest in peace to both of them, Sandra Dale Connor and Henry Kissinger. Okay, so next, Jesse Smollett. Breaking news on this day, December 1st, Jesse Smollett was, uh, or should I say, uh, his conviction was upheld by the Illinois Appeals Court. Now, what does that mean? Is Jesse going to jail for 30 months? That's the 2.6 months that he was originally given for staging an attack back in 2019 now look look people okay i've talked about this man since the day one okay i talked about this man and everything that has happened with this case uh from him uh from the news to them charging him to his, the charges being dropped and sealed to the uh, special investigation by Donald Trump to open up the case with the DO, DOJ uh, and then going to court and then he uh, goes to jail and then they uh, release him out of jail after just how many days? And then now we come to this era of segma of him and his appeal. His appeal was upheld. That means that his filing and the court's decision, meaning that the prosecutor had reasonable doubt that the disgraced Jesse Smollett did commit disorderly conduct and Faked a racist and homophobic attack against himself in January of 2019 and lying to the Chicago police about it. Now, I can tell you that if that's if this is the case, guys, all those charges that he was charged with, we're talking about, you know, and I did this live on the Omega Studio News. Uh, blog page when they went uh, when they gave the, uh, the 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 conviction and I went live as soon as they was reading the charge guilty 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 five guilties and the last one was six it was not guilty you can check that video out on the Omega Studio News page okay five felonies that this man has of disorderly conduct and he was convicted by his peers which happens to be the jurors I posted something on IGTV and I also posted a video of what I have had I, I, one of my videos that I posted, I posted on IGTV. And one of those videos was talking about the part where, let's not forget that the Federal Bureau of Investigation has something to do with this as well. Because if you recall that letter that was sent to him, you can go on my IG, I will repost the video again, I will do the clip again. But if you see that letter, he committed a crime. So I'm, I hope. I'm going to put this into existence. I hope that now since he has, and since the court has upheld, since his convict, if the conviction stands, this man must go to jail now, and that means he has the charges, right? Okay, 
So if that's the case, then the Federal Bureau of Investigation needs to open up the case against him for committing a crime through the Postal Service. The Postal Service. Because he committed a federal crime. Now, at one point during the pandemic, because we was having like, it was during the pandemic and everything, and I'm pretty sure he was like relieved when the pandemic came because it was, everybody was talking about the disgrace Jesse. From the, the month it happened in January of 2019 until January, February, March, April, May, June, all the way until the pandemic. And then when 2020 came, that's when we discovered about Kobe Bryant's death. And then that's when the pandemic was starting to fade in. And that's when everybody, because that was a year that came in in 2020 of January. So that's when everybody was starting to like fade away from it. But then again, uh, the Federal Bureau of Investigation said in a letter, and I read it, they said that they was, um, I think they were like holding off on the fact that they had to um, wait, wait until fingerprints and DNA come back from the letter. So that's the last that I read about that on social media. So I don't know. But I am saying today that now that the court has upheld their decision, could an investigation or could uh, the FBI reopen or open up this case? Because that had to play, that plays a part in this. That plays a part in this homophobic attack that he planned and executed on that day in January, which he thought that he was going to get away with it by going on television and telling the world with his friend Robert Roberts, Roberts about what these people allegedly did to him and how he was out for a Subway sandwich when it wasn't a Subway sandwich. He was out there for eggs. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why the cameras wasn't in the courtroom, which they could have been in the courtroom, they could have been in the courtroom, but he chose not to allow it in the courtroom. We know what was coming out of that courtroom, the testimonies and him getting up on the stand and testifying and just the the, 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 the filth that was coming out of his mouth and the things that was said. And then, you know, the field people, media, social media, citizen journalists, bloggers, was having a field time with it, okay? And the information that was coming out of that courtroom was unbelievable. That's when we heard about the whole uh, coke and the whole bathhouse and the whole sexual acts and disgusting just disgusting and it's just the fact is is that you know you have to uphold uh just like they say to uphold the constitution at all that's my next story santos is next george santos is next when you out there and you are a public figure you have to upload up upload yeah upload definitely you have to uphold the most sacred respect, dignity, because people are watching you, following you, they look up to you, and this is the type of behavior that you are, have brought into yourself. And now people see that, and that's why they went on, went off on him like that when, when that story dropped in January of 2019. Everybody was going off. I mean, from entertainment to the sports world to the comic world, everybody was making a muck out of it. They was having a field time out of it, and it was all in social media splattered on the front page. We gave the disgraced Jesse Smollett what he wanted. It's just sad because, and, and this is the true part about it, it's sad because we have a lot of men and women 
who've gone to jail already, still have it on their rap sheet, okay, charges that this man did. And they still fighting today. This man got the charge, got an expungement, a record seal. I wonder who had something to do with that. I know people were saying some something. They were saying like somebody like Michelle Obama and the Obamas had something to do with it, or somebody closer to the Obamas, and you know somebody uh, uh, such as what's her name, Kim Fox. Was it Kim Fox, uh, the, the attorney who re uh, recused herself from the case, uh, who was the prosecutor? Like, it was just a lot of stuff that was happening. And people was just, even me, even me, I was saying that I cannot believe how this man had his, he, he literally had a record. And I've seen it on social media. I've seen it on social media, and it quickly changed. The information quickly changed. Like at one point I read that this man used falsely, uh, used his, I guess his twin brother or brother's identi identity uh, when he got a charge back in California. And then next thing you know, it was off the off social media. Then it was changed. And then his records got ex expunged allegedly and uh, his case was mysteriously sealed. All in a matter of months. After this man committed these crimes. And that's the problem was worth discussing here. And and everybody was shocked. They were saying that this is mind-boggling. They were saying that this is unbelievable. They say, Are you kidding me? Like, honestly, and they people was like, they were saying, like, I have they have a charge like that, uh, you know lying or faking attacks or you know making you know even racist comments i mean that's something that you should not be playing with but trust me people have been charged convicted and still have it on their record today at the time where uh Smollett, the disgraced Jesse Smollett was sentenced to 150 days in jail. They came out with this whole free Jesse. And I'm saying, like, I don't understand. This man committed a crime. Now, I understand that the asterisk of the charge is not what, it's not like really grim. Like, he didn't murder somebody, he didn't harm anybody. Allegedly, no, not allegedly, Kareem. He wanted inflicted harm on himself by these two brothers. Okay? So, when he was told to go to jail, right? We've seen it all in court, on live social media. And when they took him to court, I can tell you that he should have stayed in jail. He should have did that time because now, since it's been upheld, 30 months is what his original sentence was. That's two and, a, two and six months. Two years and six months. That's going to be more time than you can ever imagine, the disgrace Jesse Smollett. You're going to be really sitting in jail. But then I was reading on some, on social media was saying that the decision that the, the Okay, so he had okay, so the, the, the pill that was that was upheld today, right? This is what I was reading on social media. Uh, social media, I was reading that the decision now that was held by the Illinois can now go to the Supreme Court now. So now we gotta wait again. We have to wait again because he wants another court, the superior court. The highest court in the land. Well, no, the highest court in the land is T.S. Madison's court. Okay? The Queen's Supreme Court, bitch. Okay? But no. Um, he wants the Supreme Court. So that can, e it can even go higher and he still can probably be out until then. But, ladies and gentlemen, we do know that Jesse, the disgraced Jesse Smollett was an American actor. I don't know if he still is. 
and a singer. He began his career as a child actor in 1991, uh, debuting on The Mighty Ducks. From 2015 to 2019, Smaller portrayed the musician Jamal Lyons in the infamous uh, series on Fox Empire, which I missed. Shout out to Lee Daniels, okay? And Star, I missed. Shout out to Lee Daniels because Star and Empire was my shit, and I miss it. And be, if, if, if it wasn't for this Jack Ball, it probably would have still been on today. I'm just saying. Okay, let me just run my disclaimer. Okay? Take the time to read this. Disclaimer. Okay, my disclaimer. Right? And this channel and these videos are not meant for children under the age of 13. And wrote my other disclaimer too. Uh, can I? Do I got it? Do I got it? What's my disclaimer? Okay. Warning. Views expressed and opinions expressed on this program is just that. Views and opinions. Don't take any of this serious. But I will warn you. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay. So yes. So uh, there you go. Uh, yes. This man is 41 years old. Okay. And. I don't know. It, it, I just know that everything that happened back then, you know, it's in the news, and now you have to go through it, okay? Next. All right, so we moved on from one disgrace, Jesse Smollett. Now we're moving on to another disgrace, George Santos. Okay, so George Santos, I'm like... I, I don't even know what to say about this man. Like, honestly, I do not know what to say about this man. He should have known that this was coming. Like, honestly, he should have known that this was coming. I don't know if he was thinking that, you know, because sometimes, you know, we have a what is called a brain in our cranium, like in our head. And it's so much that goes through that machine. You understand? And it's a lot that can be, like, the brain can tolerate. It can even tolerate pain, too. Like, honestly. It can, it's mental health. It's a lot that the brain can tolerate. And with this man right here, on this day today, December 1st, the disgraced George Santos was expelled from the house. Okay. So, Let's go. Well, damn. He's not even up there no more. They done removed him quick. Damn. They done removed him quick. They done changed the locks. They done... Uh, woo! They ain't playing. They wanted him out. They done voted him uh, out. Out. Okay, so George... The disgrace George Santos was an American politician who served in a U.S. representative. And it's so crazy, boy. He just got into office, 35 years old, okay? He just got into office uh, representing New York 3rd Congressional District from January to December. You thought Trump one term was a disaster? This is disgusting, okay? This is disgusting. And it follows in history with the representatives of the Republicans, because this man was a Republican, not a Democrat, okay? And I can tell you that I don't understand. This man is about to go to jail. He is about to go to jail. If anything, I can tell you that they had this man's business all plastered out on social media. Okay. Say it again. I'm good. Now, let's see what it is. Okay, so the disgrace. Yes, I, I don't even want to. Uh -uh. Well, let's go. Get into it, Kareem. 23 felonies. What was that? 23. 23? Not 20? No. 
Not 10? No! Not 5? No! Just his, the disgrace just his mama had 5? He had, he lucky he got 5. He had, he would have had 6. But he got 5. But this man, the disgrace, George Santos has 20, he's been charged criminally 23 felonies. Let's read those felonies. Nine counts of white fraud. Nine counts? Not five? No! Nine? Yes! Nine counts! Nine counts? Yes, you couldn't even catch, catch me at uh, uh, zero point, point half. Or one point half. White fraud? That's a serious charge. Federal? I don't know. Federal? That's the football numbers right there. Three counts of money laundering. Two counts of theft of public funds. Public funds? Yes, bitch. Yes. Two counts of making false statements to the House of Representatives. To the House of Representatives, to his own constituents? Yes. One count of conspiracy to commit offensive against the United States. States. You mean treason? No, not treason, bitch. The conspiracy to commit offense against the United States. So not treason. No, not treason, bitch. He would not have been walking in the streets. He would have still been in Guantanamo. That would have been a blooper. I was going to say Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo Bay. They closed that. I hope they did. But no. One count of conspiracy to commit offensive against the United States. One count of making false statements to the FEC. I don't know what the FEC. If anybody know what the FEC means, let me know. Hit me up. Let me know what's good. Two counts of falsifying a re record or document. He did what? Yes. There's more. Yes. Two counts of aggravated identity theft. Identity theft. Now let me tell you guys. I've watched some videos on YouTube. My favorite home for videos. I said it, YouTube. I was watching some videos on YouTube, and it's like the cop shows. Like, I really like watching the cop shows. And these are like really cop shows where, like, reality. And these are videos from body cameras of law enforcement all across the country. And some of these videos are really hilarious. I mean, I've been watching a lot of videos, and this is because it was in the queue, on people with identity theft. And I just recently watched this guy who had to be in his 50s who went to a Chase bank. Get this. A Chase bank to cash a check. Well, before that other one was shared on social media with a transgender, went to the bank to uh, cash. She actually went to jail too. But that's, that's because she uh, had um, IDs with multiple... Um, names on it but this guy here this guy when they went into his wallet they pulled out one id then they went into his pocket and pulled out four more ids then they went into his top pocket and pulled out which all together was a total of 15 ids that this man had on him ids and and all those ids had the hologram, like the holo like the hologram, most make it look real. They were all fake and false. And it was his picture with different names. Different names and birthdays and addresses. And he was charged with identity theft. So when I think about identity theft, and I also think about um where some people, you know, tell me that. It's really serious because you got to change your password out there. People are stealing information uh, and breaches that are happening. Identity theft is on the rise. So yes, he was charged with one count on un, one, two counts on aggravated identity theft, aggravated, and one count of unlawful transaction over ten thousand dollars. Okay, and then he has. Hold on, it gets even better. He has a check fraud. In Brazil. What? Yes, bitch. And not only a check fraud in Brazil, but he is taking a plea bargain in Brazil, but he's been indicted in the United States. So uh, what does that mean, Kareem? What that means is, is that what I think it means, what I think it means, okay, I think it means that 
He's going to take the plea bargain in Brazil if it's not giving him jail time or if it is giving him jail time. I don't know what the um, the the laws laws are the laws in uh, Brazil. But if he goes to jail in Brazil, then I don't think his House of Representatives, I don't think anything in this country matters uh, if he went to Brazil. Because that's a whole different country. Okay? And I don't know they... Statute, statute, uh, limitation, not statute, limitation, their laws, child, what I'm saying, uh, laws and their uh, rules and regulations. But check fraud is serious, bitch. okay? So, on top of all those 23 counts, he's already been indicted. Don't get excited, you've just been indicted, okay? And now he's uh, uh, probably going to take a plea bargain in Brazil. But yes, they voted for him. And uh, if I can see real quick, real quick, let me see on time, real quick, uh, if I can see here, um, let me just see something real quick here. I mean, there's just a lot of information that you guys can read on Wikipedia. It's here. Go get your life. Read about it if you care for the story. But some people do. Some people don't. Uh, let's see here. I just want to read about this story where allegedly that I think some of his family members gave him money and then he turned around and stole more money from them and then used that money towards like porn pornographic sites like OnlyFans and uh, purchase high quality end labels, okay? I don't know what be going on through these people uh, minds, but I mean, this man's background was allegedly all falsified, okay? But he's been expelled, disgraced. George Santos has been expelled, and now he has to face criminal charges for his 23 felony indictments. Next. Okay, we are moving on to my girl, T.S. Madison, T.S. Madison, T.S. Madison, T.S. Madison. Oh, yeah, T.S. Madison. Oh yeah, T S Madison. Oh yeah, T S Madison for the Maddie Mob News. Maddie Mob News. I don't have an intro for it, but I, I, you know, I'm sitting here jumping, you know, because I love me some T S Madison. And yes, I T S Madison, T S Madison, bitch. She just, she got a new cologne out. Like I, I, I don't know if um, if you guys know, but T S Madison got a new cologne out. She got a new cologne out. Just type T.S. Madison cologne and just get your life. I think she's taking orders or people are um, ordering or maybe it's like uh, not. I don't know. I, I think it's a link out where you can order the perfume. I think when I went to go check when it first when she first made the news about it coming out, uh, I didn't. Um, I went to the link and it wasn't working. So. I don't know if it's like working out, but T.S. Madison did an episode on Bolivity Television, and this show is called Asking for a Friend. And this episode was mask on, fuck it, mask off. I like the part where she was with Miss Lawrence. Now, Miss Lawrence, speaking of star. And speaking of Lee Daniels, and speaking of Empire, I'm so happy because, you know, all this is in the midst. Madison was really big on the whole star. And she did the whole after show for star. And, oh, my God, she had Miss Lawrence on it because Miss Lawrence was one of the stars. And shout out to Queen Latifah. And shout out to all the other stars on star and Empire. I miss y'all. Okay. Uh, they were doing their thing, and I really hope that they're doing their thing now and making films and TV and television and just make nothing but greatness and awesomeness. And again, shout out to Lee Daniels, okay? Big shout out to him. All right? So, yeah. So, Miss Lawrence was on there. Miss Lawrence, of course, was uh, uh, a a actress, I believe, actress or actor, actress. And that's because I forgot the pronoun of how her pronouns, but uh, okay. So, Ms. La I'm just saying, Miss Lawrence, I apologize, but I'll get it right. Miss Lawrence and T.S. Madison was on 
to ask for a friend. And it was so interesting because I was just like shocked that they were on set together again. But I just want to say that when they get together, things are created. And I really hope that Miss Lawrence is on there again. I think at some point, uh, and everything Miss Lawrence was talking about was true, uh, where if I can recall about the part where they were saying that a lot of people ran up to Washington about the bathrooms when he was saying that we've been using, when, when Miss Lawrence was saying that we've been using these bathrooms, uh, even it didn't take legislation to have to uh, pass this or try to adopt something. We've been doing it. Okay. So uh, I can tell you that Miss Lawrence definitely speaks nothing but wisdom. T.S. Madison speaks nothing but wisdom. And I really hope that everybody can get your life on uh, asking for a friend. And I think they're in their, uh, they're in like two seasons. And you can find it on Bolivity Television on YouTube. Right? I'm out of my head. And I'm not, and I'm getting spoiled for this time. Okay. So, um, Thank you for that. All right. So, um, so yeah, so Madison just did an interview on OutSFL, and it's uh, OutOutSFL.com, and you can just type in T.S. Madison. It's a renaissance woman. It is absolutely every sense of, of the word. So that is what's here. There's an interview here. Uh, with Michael Cook. And I think Michael Cook is interviewing with T.S. Madison and T.S. Madison is like, you, you can see like the dialogue and what Madison said to the, as answers to Michael Cook's questions. So I'm gonna actually uh, get my life and read this story after the air of the show. Uh, but yes, T.S. Madison is definitely, definitely uh, doing her thing. Uh, I literally have T.S. Madison alert news on here, and it gives me, like, all the alerts from her uh, Twitter. And six hours ago, she just posted. Uh... Oh, she just, she was posting things about what went down on the show and, like, what people, because I'm like, wait a minute, I'm, like, reading this, and I'm like, okay. And also, you guys can get your life uh, uh, with T.S. Madison. Hold on. Let me just do this because I'm just not really getting all that. Okay. So, yes, T.S. Madison is uh, – you can get your life with T.S. Madison on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And put her in your alerts. We all know T.S. Madison best from the Queen Supreme Court, bitch. And uh, her movies and TV shows, such as T.S. Madison Experience, Turned Out with T.S. Madison, Movie Bros, The Perfect Find, The Movie Solo, and RuPaul Drag Race. Okay, so I, yeah, I love T.S. Madison. I really uh, wish her the best. And shout out to Miss Mary Mackins, as I say it then and I'll say it again. Holy Ghost got me shouting, tearing up my shoes. All right. So at this time, I would like to um, let me just go ahead and bring that back up. I would like to um, bring in this. Um, I do know that uh, I, I've been receiving a lot of DMs 
asking me to talk about stories. Actually, people was like sending me uh, information. And then I was telling them that uh, I haven't really started back doing everything such as Cream in the Morning and Radio 911 or What's Going America or What I See You See because I had started and founded House of Workout. And if you guys know that I have done some videos on IGTV, House of Workout that premiered with season one, episode one on November 1st, 2023. And you guys can go up on IGTV, which is my Instagram, and you guys can get your life on those archive videos, which definitely uh, my um, my vision was to get people up and moving. And if you can, if you when you watch some of the videos, you will see that I start some of the videos off with meditation. Uh, I believe that meditation is definitely a great way to start your day, even when you are like mad, angry, because sometimes people wake up and they're grumpy because they don't want to get up and it's early in the morning. And then I know that time has gone back. So when we get up, usually it's like daytime outside, like light is outside. So I start off with motivation and then I do like warm ups and then I'll get into the groove. Some videos and then I'll have some videos that will have like uh, blogging, and then, because at some point, I didn't really know when I was doing House of Workout, how I was going to do it. Was it going to be live? So I I stuck with the plan of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday early in the morning. Like, I didn't have a time. I just did it like at five or like earlier. So uh, get your life on there. I do know I can tell you. Well, you might have to just say this is the update for the Omega Studio News Talk Show T right here on Radio 911. I love Radio 911, man. Radio 9, I think the last episode. Oh, actually, yes. If you guys uh haven't really got, you know, really familiar with Radio 911, Radio 911 is part of one of the platforms, just like what I see you see, uh, House of Workout, uh um, Talk Show T, What's Going on in America. Um, radio nine one one is definitely uh, it's in, it's up. We in episode ten. The last time I did radio nine one one was back when the late Tyree Nichols was killed. Okay, uh, that was back in the beginning of this year, and then uh, episode that was episode nine, episode eight was back in 2022 and that I remember that well because I um featured Rodney Chester Rodney Chester from Noah's Ark who played Alex Kirby okay and then we have more episodes <laughs> of uh Radio 911 on YouTube just go on YouTube and get your life up there I think we had Nay Love I think we had Nay Love shout out to Nay Love shout out to Carlton Boyd, my best friend Carlton Boyd. Okay. Shout out to uh Al Nicholson, Daquan Jones, shout out to you. I need you to uh hit me up because I know you're gonna listen to this and you always hit me up. Thank you. Um, but yes, yeah, shout out to everybody who is uh here. Uh I can tell you that Kareem in the morning is making its approach. Just wanted to put our radio 911 out there, and I definitely Definitely did not forget about Kareem YouTube Gaming. I can tell you that on 12-2-2023, there will be a premiere of a game on the community news channel. Okay? So you guys can go up there and what's well, the community gaming channel? But uh, there will be a new episode as well as a new series for Democracy 4. People were asking me for some footage on that. I do have some footage on that. Uh, I will be posting that. And then also, too, I do want to say this before I go. Okay. 
Uh, because I think that, oh, no, 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 that's not all the news. That's not? No. Oh, well, let me just, well, uh, let me just put it, put it all in one. Okay. Before I add that on, um, I do want to say that, um, I do want to say this. P. Diddy, however you want to say, Sean Puffy Combs, Diddy, America Rapper, you're in danger, girl. Okay? Um, I don't know what is going on, but I do know that uh, we had allegations of a person coming forward claiming sexual abuse. Then we had another person come forward claiming sexual abuse. Then there's other stories that are now aiming and uh, about this. I can tell you that I don't have the information yet, yet right now, but I can tell you that when more information comes out about Puff Daddy, Sean Love Combs, also known as his stage name, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, or Diddy, the America rapper, I will bring it here on Talk Show T or Omega Studio News or any of the platforms. But as soon as breaking news happen, I will let you guys know because I already know it's going to hit like grits on butter. Soon when the stories come out, just like it, it came out now, we definitely going to know about Sean P. Diddy or Sean Love Combs. Okay? And I can also tell you that there was some story before I um, go. Let me just get it all out there because people did ask me about it. Now, I did give you guys the story about uh, R. Kelly, right? I did tell y'all that R. Kelly, and y'all can check this out on the blog page too, that R. Kelly, do I got enough time to do this? I got to speak real fast, right? Okay, so R. Kelly definitely was taking legal action against a U.S. prison for leaking prison information. And I can tell you that it's, it's crazy. Let me just read this real quick. So the breaking news, if you haven't already known, we have just learned that R. Kelly is suing prison officials and of course, blogger Tasha K. Uh, TST OS News have also learned from social media that allegation prison worker was working with Tasha K and allegedly sending and selling private information by R. Kelly, email and corresponding. Okay. Private calls, visit logs. I see now back when the blogger released personal information, looks like it was stolen. The singer R. Kelly stated that the blogger Tasha K allegedly shared his personal business that invaded his privacy and added hurting his reputation, causing him emotional distress, according to social media. If you recall, R. Kelly is serving 30 year prison sentence after being found guilty of sex trafficking. TST OS News believes no matter what, every person has the right to protection of information and not exploitation. It's very hard when you have blogger like Tasha K who either lied or buy information, hurts the reputation of others, except themselves. Now, if you guys don't know who Tasha K is, if you guys recall, a judge has ruled in the favor that Tasha K must pay the infamous Cardi B, $4 million. In settlement, social media has reported that Tasha K does not have any money in her bank account and all her personal. Uh oh. oh. Right on time. Uh, blogger Tasha K, she doesn't have any money in her bank account. And uh, they're saying that, uh, which includes purse, cars, clothing, engagement rings, engagement ring, business relation property. It's just Total of 58995000 When will this stop? I really hope in this case, R. Kelly wins a settlement from Tasha K. My opinion is if you speak lies about people, be prepared to pay in damages because they are coming to a collapse. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Radio 911. This is season one, episode 10. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys in the next video. For more information, 
you guys could visit the blog page. Have a good one. This is Radio 911 with Kareem Clemens. Holla!